the topic is long bone features and loss of uh, ossification and the special features of sesamoid bones so in this first we consider parts blood nerve supply of a long bone you can you are seeing the picture of a long bone which is a shaft and at the ends of shaft there are two ends which are called epiphyses and the middle part shaft is called diaphysis so the long bone is vertical in height more than the breadth they serve as rigid levers of our movement it consists of an outer compact bone inside there is a hollow space called medullary cavity at the ends of long bone the medullary cavity is replaced by spongy bone it has a long shaft called diaphysis and expanded ends on both ends called epiphysis shaft provides leverage for movement ends are enlarged to strengthen the joint and give attachment to the tendons and ligaments of joint epiphysis are made of spongy bone and are covered by a thin layer of compact bone mature long bones have an epiphysal line between the diaphysis and epiphysis this is the remnant of epiphysal plate articular surfaces of a long bone are covered by hyaline cartilage cartilage helps to produce frictionless movement between the articulating surfaces blood supply of a long bone is by nutrient artery nutrient artery enters the bone through nutrient foramina it passes through perforating canals which are also called as wokman's canal long bone is also covered by periosteum on its external surface periosteum has an outer fibrous layer and an inner osteogenic layer many of its fibers penetrate the bone as perforating fibers and these perforating fibers are called as sharpest fibers they secure the periosteum attachment to the bone osteogenic layer of periosteum plays an important role in the bone growth and the healing of the fractures now we come to loss of ossification loss of ossification are the rules which bones follow initial ossification begins only at the center of ossification ossification is laying down of lamellae of bone tissue by osteoblast primary centers can be single or multiple they appear before birth between 6 to 8 weeks of fetal life except for the cuneiform and navicular bones secondary centers usually multiple and appear after birth with the exception of lower end of femur and the upper end of tibia primary centers give rise to diaphysis of a long bone secondary centers give rise to epiphysis the law of ossification for secondary centers states the epiphysis which ossifies first unites with the diaphysis in the last such end is called as growing end of the bone the direction of the nutrient artery is away from the growing end the famous rhyme to remember this is to the elbow i go from the knee i flee secondary centers of ossification which form epiphysis unite first and then unite with the shaft 
Then we go to another competency that is special features of a sesamoid bone. Sesamoid bones are small and rounded. They develop inside the tendons which are compressed against bony surfaces. Example, the ball of the big toe. They slide on articular surfaces and prevent obstruction to blood supply during any compression. The examples of sesamoid bones include the patella, the pisiform and the fabella. Functions of sesamoid bones are they resist pressure, minimize friction, alter the direction of the pull of the muscles and maintain local blood circulation. Coming to special features of sesamoid bones, they are they are embedded in the tendons and joint capsules. Do not have any periosteum. Ossify after birth. They are related to articular or non-articular surfaces. Surface of contact are covered by hyaline cartilage. Lubricated by synovial membrane. Thank you.